Okay, so I'm going to welcome uh, John Chambers, who is the former CEO of Cisco. Mm -hmm. And he took Cisco, IT and networking company, from a $1.2 billion company when he started as CEO in 1995. And when he left in 2015, it was a $47 billion company. John also created JC2 Ventures, which works with startups to scale them and help them expand. And then we have Maurice Lavi. Isn't his beard good looking? His beard is fantastic. <laughs> we love the beard, yeah. <laughs> love the beard. But it would be an understatement to say that Maurice Lavi is anything but a fixture of corporate France. He's also an authentic tech ambassador, as is John, chairman of Publicis, and creator of Vivitech, which is happening this week. So they both gentlemen share a common vision for France to excel at tech, to become the next tech mecca. And let's start there. Mm -hmm. So in a country of 65 million people with some of the smartest brains around, I think we're going to show a chart up here. It's kind of surprising that there's only one or two multi-billion dollar startups. So Little Sweden has an eighth of the population and three times as many. So let's start there. Um, all the ingredients are here to succeed. Okay, mm -hmm. France has all the right tools. But how do you, A, and we want to talk about that, but how do you make the leap from you know, startup genius to unicorn powerhouse? So it, it starts with the basic. How many of you are in startups in the room? Just a quick show of hands. You have to get the engine going at the foundation level. And if you watch what France has done on venture capital startup investments, from just four years ago, uh, you had about 143 startups being funded by venture capital and high tech. Today, last year, it was 743. So to be very candid, and Maurice, you can kick me at any time, France was not a good place to start a business five years ago. And most international players would not invest here, and I'd be very hesitant. But you've watched this country change with a tremendous speed in three years. You saw it first at the Consumer Electronics Show, and you began to see the number of startups there double every year. And suddenly there were as many startups from France as there were from the US. So it's getting those trends right. So now the challenge that each person in this room faces is not just to be a successful startup. It's how do you scale your organization and how you get a much higher percentage of those to be unicorns. Mm -hmm. But if you don't put enough into the pipeline, there's no way you get a spill out at the high end. That's why we have only two unicorns here in France. Uh, if you look at just my own investments, I'm in two unicorns already. I have four companies that can probably play at that level if we do uh, it right going forward. And that's the pipeline we need to get here in France. Mm -hmm. I believe that will happen, and I believe it will happen because of enlightened leadership, both at the government level and can at the business level as well. So we're getting the trend right. Uh, Maurice, what is the secret sauce to making that leap, though, to unicorn in your words? I think that uh, there is something which is happening everywhere in the world when you have the unicorns, which is the, the cluster of... Uh, uh, where you find uh, an ecosystem with the university, the labs, the VCs, and the entrepreneurs, the people who have the ideas. It has been extremely difficult to have the universities working with the startups because it's this business and it is uh, a university, so we have to keep it uh, honest and separate from the business. And um, the VCs, uh, we are not close to the university and the startup. So we, we had to build something different uh, from almost scratch. The other aspect is that during years, it has been seen as not very positive to be successful in France, to, to put it nicely. Uh, when uh, somebody is successful, it was almost uh, blamed, and if he, on top of that, not only is successful, but he is making money, this is really a shame. Today, uh, it's uh, something which is much more acceptable. There has been a lot of progress which has been made, and uh, definitely uh, Macron has changed the way of thinking. I think the most important thing that uh, President Macron has done is to change the state of mind of the people to look at the thing differently, to invite people to dare, and to invite people to invest. So I believe that we have now 
the ingredients mm -hmm. to create those uh, unicorns. Mm -hmm. Between having the ingredients, and I don't know if you are a good cook, but I can put a lot of ingredients on the table, and if I try to make a cake out of it, I know I will fail. And maybe you will be successful. So having the ingredients is not enough. What you need on top of that is uh, a, a spirit, an environment, and the fact that uh, uh, for the national community, it is extremely important to see that people are successful. And this is starting to happen, okay. but it's only starting to happen. You know, the exciting part is if you were to look back three or four years ago when you go to a great school like Polytechnique and you were asked the graduates, how many of you are going to go into startups, only a small percentage would raise their hand. Mm -hmm. Two years ago, I was there with Law Durant when he was defense minister and he's speaking in French and I was speaking in English. And we said, here's the reason you ought to do a startup. And 80% of the room said that's where they want to go. Mm -hmm. So you have enlightened leadership at the government level who's outlining a digital France vision that's inclusive of the whole country, not just given uh, uh, geographies. Uh, you have a startup community that's come to life. And remember, entrepreneur is a French word. And I think France is becoming literally the innovation gateway for Europe. And that isn't just a marketing position. I was with uh, uh, Prime Minister Modi and uh, President Macron when Macron went to India. And it was an honor to be the French high tech ambassador. But basically, you saw two leaders in the world outlining how they were going to change dramatically their country, even though they clearly came from yeah. entirely different backgrounds. OK, so I just want to talk a little bit, because we're on the eve of the Tech for Good Summit, which, Maurice, you are organizing with President Macron and global tech leaders from around the world. And, and like globalization, there is this very real fear that technology is not going to make our lives better, that it will destroy jobs, and that it will uneven the playing field for those who are not equipped to succeed in a digitized economy. So, so what, is, what do you tell a broader French public who thinks that a tech revolution is just another guise to enable the privileged? In, in fact, uh, it's not only the French, it's uh, uh, the, the, the world. Uh, and it's a problem which is for the global world. Uh, what's happening is a little bit uh, like uh, climate change, and, but you don't see it. Climate change, you are starting to perceive it, and a lot of people have started to write about it, etc. Uh, regarding technology and artificial intelligence, you have a lot of people who are scared because they don't know if uh, their education, their training will fit with the future. And they are fearing to lose their jobs or to not be able to cope with uh, the, the new world. So the, the purpose tomorrow is to have uh, uh, the, the stars of uh, the technology, people like John Chambers, like uh, Zuckerberg, like uh, Ginny Rometty, uh, Satya Nadella, etc., who will be sitting and working on at least three issues. One is about education. What is the kind of education that we have to develop for tomorrow's world in order that pe people are prepared? And not only the educated people. This is something which is relatively easy. For the educated people, they will always find ways. It's much more for the people who have not received the right level of education. The second is future of work. What will be the work of the future and how can we adapt to this new world? And third is a big question because when you look at uh, the women in the industry, uh, of tech industry, uh, in some countries it's below 15%. In the US it's only 22%. And there is a huge gap between uh, the skills of the woman and their acceptance in the industry. We have to address that issue, as well as the issue of uh, diversity. So there is three work stream who will be working on this, and they believe it's just the beginning of uh, a book which has yet to be written. Right, right. So I'm going to just pivot sure. a little bit and ask both of you this question. But my colleagues uh, who cover Silicon Valley, and you live in Silicon Valley, you know, they asked me two questions. They asked me, why are Whenever French- Whenever I have a tough question, I always say one of my colleagues is asking me. Right, and that's a nice save, but <laughs> not here. <laughs> I'm just so, teasing you, Jackie. Um, why are French entrepreneurs, number one, risk averse? Um, and when they're not risk averse, why did they leave France? 
Well, I think you, you have uh, two related questions. The first is that French entrepreneurs three to five years ago were risk adverse. And the labor laws, et cetera, were such that once you got to 50 people, you were much better off going to the US in terms of the ability to scale your, your country. What has happened now, and I just met with seven French entrepreneurs an hour and a half before I came here, is you see an entirely different space. There has nothing to do with privilege. Uh, in Silicon Valley, we only care how smart you are and can you get results. The same thing is occurring here in France. And you have the unique blend of a political leadership that understands the positives, what can be done, the job creation, the standard of living increase, you're gonna live an extra 10 to 15 years because of what artificial intelligence would do, et cetera, and realize that, however, it will also destroy jobs. And so if we don't get the startup engine going at an entirely different pace, much like is occurring in France as opposed to the US, which is at a 40-year low, you're gonna have a problem with job creation. You also need to change the education system. You begin to catch young people, 10 to 14 years of age, diversity, gender, et cetera, and getting them excited about entrepreneurism earlier so they have a chance to participate. So it has to be inclusive. Uh, yeah, with your permission, John, I, I would probably uh, have a very, a slightly different point of view regarding uh, risk adverse. In fact, you, it's not so much the entrepreneurs who are risk adverse, it's much more the financing system as well as the VCs, we were risk adverse mm -hmm. and we are not ready to invest on people. And um, it, we, we have a habit in France, uh, and this is historical, when, when you go to the bank and you have an idea, they say, okay, what guarantee are you proposing? And you say, okay, my guarantee is my idea, uh, that's not enough, and go back to the drawing board. And uh, today, the situation has dramatically changed, okay. thanks to what has been done, to the fact that the spotlights are on uh, startups, that there is a lot of effort of not only communication, but also VCs coming from the Silicon Valley mm -hmm. uh, who are investing in France and giving an example to the French investors. And you have the French VCs who are t starting to take some risk. So we see that there is a change which is not so much with the people who have an idea and the entrepreneurs, because when they are going to be entrepreneurs in the Silicon Valley, in England, or in China, because you have a lot of French people who have started their business in uh, those regions, uh, now they can do it in France because there are people who are ready to invest on their idea and their skills. And that is the new, new thing, which is happening okay. since uh, a short while. So you have a broader ecosystem taking part yeah. in that and addressing the risk averse. Okay. It's starting to get there. It's disrupt or get disrupted. There is no entitlement. Yeah. Uh, I was in Boston 128. That used to be the high tech center of the world. And we saw Silicon Valley happen and we didn't change and a thousand companies disappeared. Same thing can happen to Silicon Valley. There is no entitlement. Uh, the next Silicon Valley is just as likely to be here at Station F mm -hmm. and in France as it is in other places around the world. Here you've got a combination of, you have business leaders who are committed to making this change. You've got a government leader who's fearless. Uh, and he really is for what he believes in terms of the future of the country. And you have entrepreneurs, and you can't teach this. You either really want to take these risks at this point in time or not. I think our challenge is can we scale? And your original question, Mel, if we don't learn how to take a, a huge amount of startups, which should go up by 40 to 50% a year, and it went up 45% last year, if you can't take those in the mid-sized companies and then take them to unicorns, then we won't do that employment issue where the jobs will be destroyed. That's our challenge, I believe. And, and to your point, Maurice, um, you know, you Agreed. talked about Macron changing the state of mind, and you know, Macron changing the momentum. You both talk about that. But, uh, but how much are French entrepreneurs, you know, when we talk about risk and the ecosystem, taking full advantage of the momentum? John has said a, a few minutes ago what he has witnessed at uh, Ecole Polytechnique. There is a survey which has been made a few years ago where we were asking all the students uh, across all the country what they would like to do in the future. You have roughly 37, 38% who are saying, I want to be a civil servant because there is a guarantee of a job for the life, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, in the last survey that we did uh, just uh, two weeks ago, you have approximately the same number, 35%, not 37, 
who say, I want to start up my own business. And this is a huge change. So I'm not sure that these 35% will succeed or will have an idea which will be successful or whatever. But I believe that the state of mind has changed. And being an entrepreneur is something which is uh, noble, that people see that they can create something which is positive. And France is welcoming this. And you have a fantastic ambassador with my friend John. So I have time for... You know, I want to stay with that for a second. Yeah. Can you imagine the US having a French tech ambassador represent them on a global basis? The point that I'm making is this country I, is applying. making changes. Please, please, I'm applying. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm applying but for that job. But the, the point I'm making is France is changing. And when I first said I'm betting on France in a big way three years ago, even my best friend said, John, you get market transitions right, but not this time. <laughs> but you told me it was changing. And you could see it changing, and you see it in the young people. So if I were betting on one nation yeah. in Europe, I bet on France right now, and I am. I've doubled down twice. You've doubled down twice. Okay. Twice. All right. Um, two quick questions. Um, one, I want to get your perspective on your takeaways, your lessons learned. But first, I want to quickly talk about the fact that, you know, France has some of the most illustrious companies that have gone global. You know, the L'Oreal's, the LVMH, the Total. Um, I mean, these are companies that are super successful. And yes, they were created generations ago, but they cracked the global code. What can startups learn from the example and vice versa? Uh, they have to go to VivaTech because uh, one of the very okay. important things that we have done at VivaTech, and this is probably the best thing that we have done because uh, the CS is uh, making exhibition of new products, etc. Uh, the startup with the Web Summit, but there is one thing which is the signature of VivaTech, which is the lab where you have uh, the large corporations working with startups. And when you see what happened since 2016, it's quite impressive. There has been a lot of agreement of collaboration between LVMH, L'Oréal, uh, La Poste, uh, BNP Paribas, name it, uh, with startups. They sign contracts, they finance research, etc. So this is something which is uh, extremely helpful. And it is not only helping the startups, it is also helping because the large corporation yes. to transform themselves to be faster, quicker, and to be right on the board. Okay, so in our, our, our last few seconds here, I just want you yes. to tell this you know, audience of tech executives, you know, what's the single best piece of advice you would give to them as they try and scale their business? So you want to realize if you produce a MeT product, you have no future. You've got to get a strategy and vision for where you want to take your company, what is your differentiation. You have to build a strong culture, and you've got to be able to communicate very well. But if I were to challenge the group in this room on one issue, I'd dare to dream. Uh, I've never had regrets about did I dream too many big dreams, and I acquired 180 companies. I have regrets I should have even dreamed more. And in my next life, I'm going to try to do that. So my advice, be dreamers, have no fear, but say how you're going to differentiate yourself in the market. In short, dare to go for big, big ideas. Dare to go for big. Okay, and on that note, thank you very much, Maurice and John. Thank you. Thank you. Okay.